Hi guys, welcome to today's video where we'll be talking about inheritance of blood group and recess factor. Now, let's have a look at the inheritance of blood group first. There are four types of blood group, namely A, AB, and O. And this system, this naming system, is known as ABO system. Your blood group is determined by ABO gene. The ABO gene comes in three different versions, which is A, B, and O. Some gene versions can overcome the other ones. A and B is co-dominant, means both alleles will be expressed together in phenotype. Neither wins out over the other. And O is the recessive allele. Okay, everyone will inherit two alleles of the gene, one from each parent. And the combination of your two alleles will determine your blood type. So, for blood group A, the possible genotype would be two dominant A and allele, or one dominant A with a recessive O allele. As for type B, the possible genotype could be two dominant B allele or one dominant B with a recessive O allele. For AB group, the only possible genotype would be one A allele and one B allele. While for O, the only possible combination is two recessive O alleles. So, what does it mean actually to have a particular allele? A allele will code for the enzyme that makes the A antigen on the surface of red blood cell, and B allele will code for the B antigen on the red blood cell surface. So, for blood group A, you have A antigen on the surface of red blood cell. And for B, you have B antigen on the surface of red blood cell. For AB group, you have both A and B antigens on the surface. And the third version of this gene, which is the O allele, will code for a protein that is non-functional. That's why there's no surface molecules at all. In the blood serum, there are antibodies as well. So, if you have antigen A, you have anti B in your blood serum. If you have antigen B on the red blood cell surface, it means that you also have anti-A antibodies in your serum. As for AB group, there will be no antibodies in the serum. For O blood group, you will have both anti-A and anti-B antibodies. So this is important because when Conducting a blood transfusion, it is important to carefully match the donor and the recipient blood types. If the donor blood cells have surface molecules that are different from those of the recipient, the antibodies in the recipient's blood will recognize the donor blood as foreign, and this will trigger an immune response resulting in blood clotting. Now, 
Imagine that we have a situation at the right. We have a dad who has AB blood and a mum who has O blood. It means that father has A and B allele. Remember, we have two copies of our gene, one from our mother and one from father. Okay? And O mum means that she has two copies of O alleles. Alright. And that will pass A half the time and B another half of the time each time during formation of gamete. And mum will always pass O allele to the gamete because that's all she has to give. Then, during fertilization, gametes will come together and form the genotype of offspring likewise. And so, now let's label the phenotype of the offspring. So, A allele with B allele means you have A blood. B and O allele means you have B blood. So, the phenotypic ratio would be 1 group A to 1 group B. Alright. It means that the offspring will have 50% chance of getting A blood or 50% chance of getting B blood. Now, let's have a look at the inheritance of recess factor. Recess factor is a group of antigens found on the surface of red blood cells as well. And this recess factor is controlled by a pair of alleles, which is the dominant recess allele which will code for the recess factor on your red, red blood cell and also recessive recess allele If an individual has recess factor then he is known as recess positive The possible genotype for a recess positive person would be homozygous dominant recess or heterozygous. If the individual does not have any recess factor on the red blood cell, then he is known as a recess negative person. And the only possible genotype would be two recessive recess fat allele. Now let's look at the example on the right. If a heterozygous recess positive father married a recess negative mother, what will happen to their children? Now let's draw a genetic diagram out of this. So first, you label the genotype of the parents first. So since father is a heterozygous recess positive, it means that he has one dominant and one recessive allele. And for mother, mother can only have two recessive allele. Father will pass on the dominant allele half of the time and the recessive allele half of the time to the gametes. And mother can only pass on the recessive allele. During fertilization, gametes will come together and form the genotype like what, what's being shown here. Okay, and this is the genotype of the offspring. And the ratio would be one heterozygous recess positive to one 
homozygous recess negative. that their baby has 50% chance of being recess positive and 50% chance of being recess negative. Recess factor can be a problem if a recess negative mother has a recess positive baby. Okay, what happens is that when a rhesus negative mother is pregnant with a rhesus positive child, some of the rhesus blood antigen from the fetus can enter the blood of the mother. So, now the mother's blood reacts by producing antibodies which may enter the baby's blood and destroy some of the red blood cells. Okay? But this does not pose any danger to the first child because the number of antibodies produced is not large enough. In the second or subsequent pregnancies, if the baby is recess positive again, the antibodies from the mother may enter the baby's blood and cause clumping of the red blood cell known as agglutination. In a critical situation, the child can die if the blood is not replaced with recess negative blood. In less critical cases, the child may suffer from brain damage. Okay, hope this is helpful. Thank you.